I kind of want to start off by allowing the viewers to learn a bit more about your quick or to learn about your background, what your background is in psychotherapy, who you are trained to work with and, and so on. Absolutely. You know, I reflecting on this, I've been doing this 29 years now, which has been, you know, a huge chunk, been doing it more than half of my life. So I started off, I've been in private practice from the beginning. So almost 30 years of private practice work. And I started off working actually with young children. That was our specialty. My wife's a therapist too. So we both do the same thing. And we worked specifically with children and trauma and uh, foster children, adoption, a lot of attachment issues, a lot of abuse, neglect. It was just a lot. It was, it was a great learning mm -hmm. experience. It was very hard, but we would work with children as young as two years old in therapy. And so we've learned, we've had great training and we learned how to um, help from birth on up. And through that, I started doing parenting. And then as, which I love to this day, I love parenting because it helps parents learn how to do the things their children need to be the best that adults they can be. Then it morphed into me seeing just a variety of people from adults to couples, which I work with a lot of couples in relationships now that I love also. And then since I love sport, I, I've always loved sport, always competed in mm -hmm. sport. I thought, hmm, and an athlete came in the door and then another athlete came in the door, different sports. And I thought, man, mm -hmm. so I learned EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It's a long word. But that is basically pairing bilateral stimulation of the brain with a trauma or with a past life experience that was really difficult. And it desensitizes the brain to the trauma. And so I took that, which a lot of athletes it can benefit from that, from injury recovery or from a, a gymnast. A lot of times when they're scared to do a certain tumble or a move, I was able to do peak performance with them, injury recovery with higher level athletes going into college or trying to make it in the Olympics or pro level. And it's been amazing. So I've been able to do at this point, we're very fortunate to do what, to pick and choose what we want to do. Uh, and so right. my, my experience has been huge and I've been grateful for everybody who's taught me. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you've covered, I mean, all walks of life, really. I mean, you've, I mean, you've spanned from two-year-olds to <laughs> professional athletes, like, prof are they like pro, like are we talking like college or I guess it's a wide range, I assume, right? It is. It, the, the majority are going to be high schoolers going to college mm. or gymnasts trying to make it to the Olympics, swimmers trying to make it to the Olympics because they're typically younger people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a fine line. You have a window of time to be able to make that. And it's hundreds of a second in swimming or tenths of a point in gymnastics. Right. And the pressure is huge uh, on people to perform at a young age. And so when you get in that and also injury recovery, you know, I've had athletes who have broken bones and healed and been scared to death that they're going to crack and break mm -hmm. it again. And they just can't perform the same, but the brain holds on to core beliefs that sometimes it does not want to let go of. And that's why we try to work those core beliefs out of there, which is the same with abuse and neglect and trauma that happens early in life. It stays there until yeah. we change the message. Yeah. And it's, I, you could especially see it with people competing in the Olympics because the pressure is so huge. It's a hu not only is it a huge stage, but like just the opportunity is so rare. Yeah. And the Olympics happen every four years mm -hmm. and you're not guaranteed. So if one little mess up and it's like, oh, I got to wait, try again in four years. Like it's I had a swimmer. I, I can't imagine the pressure. A swimmer that was trying for the Olympics here in the States. And he said, with the times I swim, I would make any other country's Olympic team. And I am not, and he ended up not barely missing the U.S.'s Olympic team. So there are that many more uh, athletes that are higher level and it's just difficult. It's pressure. Yeah. Life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. You don't really think that's what you don't really think about those kind of athletes and like really needing like like legit intensive therapy like that. And yeah. then you well, start thinking about it more. It's like, of course, like that's so much pressure. That's so much work and mental. Let me tell you all, all the coaches that are out there are not always the nicest. I mean, and they get a lot of beat down from coaches. They get a lot of just, it's like almost military style, right? Trying to force them into producing without realizing they're people, they're children, they're teenagers, you know? Yeah. And 
funny enough, we talk about that. What we're talking about today is like that tough military style of coaching and training, which is pretty much what the MDK project is all about. On top of the fact that they are, you know, using trauma healing as like their main selling point is like they're selling the idea of, hey, this will help you cure trauma, which I think is wild. What were your initial reactions to seeing those clips? The way you heal trauma is with a corrective emotional response. You don't heal trauma exactly. with further abusive interactions and harsh and abrasive because anybody who's been through trauma it was typically not somebody who's like mr rogers it's somebody and people mistreated them and so you're further traumatizing them yeah it's like they're just relating it back to what they've already experienced it's like yeah it, it just doesn't work with mental with mental health like you can't like i mean the, the one of the clips i sent you they were name calling like, I mean, it uh, wild, but aside from the verbal abuse of it all, which is pretty wild, can extreme physical activity like that, can that actually be a benefit to trauma related issues or mental health issues? To me, under one condition, and that is that it is accomplishment oriented. It is mm. goal oriented. It is, mm. I'm with you. You can do this. It is not you're a horrible person because you're lagging behind and everybody else is disappointed in you and they're going to suffer for they're going to suffer because you are lagging behind it is motivation oriented let the other mm -hmm. people finish and come back and cheer and push that person on to become the best they can be it is not about you're either going to exit this door or this door you're either going to be kicked out on a failure or you're going to get through this door and you are a real man who's really tough and can make it. And by the way, you're going to be a better husband, a better father. I just don't right. see it's, how. Yeah. Dustin, it's why the military is successful at what they do. They train people to perform and erase emotion. They take mm -hmm. emotion out of what they do. Which is wild to me because with this, you're selling this idea on emotion and mental health. You can't, like, it doesn't make any sense to, you know, because these people who are taking the course, they already have a low sense of self-worth. They most of them probably don't even realize it. Sign they have a low sense that? of self-worth, yeah. low sense of self-esteem, probably depressed. That uh, many of them have PTSD and they don't even know it. And on top of that, they also think that being yelled at and being screamed at and being belittled is the key somehow. And it's they're going to quickly find out that's not the case, like, because that's, you're right. It's not how it works. You because, know, all of the, you know, these people need uplifting. They don't need to be pushed down. Well, and successful treatment with anybody who's been through trauma or really tough situation, because I've worked with a lot of military people who've been in the military and experienced PTSD and trauma and watch people die right in front of them, just horrific things. The way I've seen healing from people who've been through that, is typically through, it would be something like psychodrama. It would be something that's experiential that allows you to be vulnerable and safe and protected in an environment. In other words, it's really about them breaking down emotionally and being held in that space, being that it's okay as a man to mm. break down about the abuse, the trauma, the, the horrible things you've been through, the, the points you feel like a failure or not good enough. And other people are there to encourage and support and lift you up and show you how model corrective emotional response model how to be a husband father friend person not to break you down to make you feel like you're nothing because how does somebody who gets berated then go home to their wife their children and say sweet sensitive compassionate things the people who join the military of course like that can That's work what makes it successful yeah, of course. But when it comes to people who have experienced horrible trauma, mm -hmm. no, like, absolutely not. Like, this is, it's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. Well, um, ask any person who has been in law enforcement or the military. I've worked with so many of them and, and watched this process. Ask them how it is to reintegrate. 
after you have been in the military, after you've served in law enforcement in an intense environment, and you try to go back to regular life, it is very difficult because you're so used to a regimen. You're so used to being told what to do. You're so used to being told when you're wrong. You're so used to being ordered around that you become that robot type. And it's very hard to all of a sudden tune into like, how am I feeling? And how do I express my emotion anyway, other than hate, anger, or resentment, bitterness? It's brutal. Yeah. And we'll get to this in a minute because I do want to talk about it because it's fascinating to me. But they do that. They go in all in this course in a 75 hour span, they go from you know, getting berated and yelled at and screamed at and doing just the most physically intense exercises to within an hour journaling. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a rapid, complete 180 of like, it's way too unbalanced and it's not how the human mind works. I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy, but imagine journaling. Um, your deepest emotion, <laughs> thoughts, and experiences with somebody who just <laughs> tore yeah. you. Yeah. It's like somebody who just called you names for an hour. I'm like, how are you feeling? I'm like, pretty bad. Yeah. Thanks. Jesus. I'm sure about that. Like, oh. Yeah. Like, oh, and th another thing I wanted to mention to you that I just learned this last night. This isn't confirmed because, you know, I couldn't find any other story about this other than this one LinkedIn article that I saw, but there was a former student who took the course and I was talking about how physically intense and horrible it was and how difficult it was. And he said it was the most difficult thing he's ever done. And he said, in fact, a student died during the course and they have an ax on the wall in memory of him. I was like, what? Like, and again, I don't want to get sued. Mm -hmm. I, this is unconfirmed. It's from, it's just from this story of a guy who took the course mm -hmm. and I could not find anything else about it, but I think, you know, it, it makes you curious and it's like, what else are they doing? And then in, in addition to that, I also saw a former survivor contestant took this course mm -hmm. and he posted on his Instagram stories that they were zipped up into body bags and buried alive and I they were talking that about there was one in the clip you sent that showed somebody very quickly like getting out of what looked like a body bag i'm like what in the heck was that yeah apparently that's a thing that they do i i haven't seen it advertised outside of students so far but at least as of three years ago that was something that they were doing was burying people alive like people were uh, and even in the Instagram post, he was talking about just extreme feelings of claustrophobia, panic, like just like thinking you're going to die. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, so much cool. of that was SEAL training. That's a lot of what that is, because I've seen different SEALs and they they are trained because they might be captured and they have to learn how to survive enemies, you know, taking them in and torturing them and not giving up information and trying to make it through. So I get that with the military and with SEAL training that you need to be ready for whatever might happen to you. That is not yeah. normal life. Mm -mm. No, not at all. And But somebody know. in a kitchen with the wife and kids screaming and yelling and food being thrown and let them practice that. Yeah, what? Like, in addition to that, I get the people who are teaching the course are former military men, like former Navy SEALs, former Marines. And the training, those parts of the training, like, I get that. I, I get why you guys are making this a part of the course, but like to dress it up as if you're healing trauma. Is, I'm a healing boy. That's dangerous. Especially if you don't have any mental health people anywhere around. Not at all. Be able not to one person. Protect. Yeah. And not one person. And also charging $20,000 for that, for it. Like, so who can it's take cheaper. this course? Yeah, actual therapy is cheaper than like like better help is so much cheaper than that. Like that's I think and that I think that's also a testament to like the mentality of these men who are taking this course, which I think I I did write some things down. I have ADHD. I forget. Do you feel like men who decide to take a course like this are afraid to express their feelings and yeah. 
they try and hide behind extreme physical activity and you know and having a brotherhood and a sense of community and they, they take that as oh well this will heal this will heal me this will fix me because Absolutely. this thought of going to therapy to them is Too weak much scarier to them or much more foreign or they may be seen as weak that's not or, worked with so many men in my career and i'll tell you this and especially a lot of marriages who are breaking or broken or lost and most of the men who can afford this course are CEO or higher executive level people. Mm -hmm. Those people that I work with are not used to being in charge of other people. They're used to having people beneath them. So to be able to come into an office like mine, and I'm a guy, I'm fortunate. Like a lot of times you get a guy like that who goes into an office with a woman who's a therapist, very little respect. I'm a guy, I can tell a mm -hmm. guy, you know what? This is how this place runs. I can do it nice. I'm very kind, but I am very direct, I'm honest. And I'll speak their language. If they're an attorney, if they work construction, if they are, you know, in the ministry, whatever they, whatever, I can speak that language to get my point across. But so mm -hmm. many of the people that would attend this course would come in my office and be like, this is a waste of time to talk about how I feel or to listen mm -hmm. to how my wife feels makes no sense and won't get things done. So they want to go to a place that's achievement oriented and it looks really good. Like you said, mm -hmm. it's dressed up very well. That makes sense. It's like a, it's almost, despite the fact that it's so extremely physically difficult, it's convenient in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I don't have to, you know, sit with a stranger and talk about my feelings to well, and them. You think you're done after just, 75 hours. I've achieved it. I've graduated from this course if they make it. And I, I'm, I, hey, I'm good. It's like a quick fix almost, which... I mean, it, I think it's a testament to how broken somebody has to be or mm -hmm. how, how badly they're hurting inside to actually think that this is going to heal me in some way, shape, or form. And I will say about the course, they do a good job about preaching on a sense of brotherhood a sense of community and even in some of their social media posts they they say things sometimes like it's okay to ask for help mm -hmm. it's okay to reach out to ask for help and those things are good but you can't also say that in my opinion you can't also say that and the people who yeah. take your course in that way and then also immediately turn right back around yeah. and try to be a therapist when you're not even well, you don't even have any experience in doing so. Like, I, it just doesn't work that way. And I think this would be a different, completely different thing if it wasn't, there wasn't any mention of talking about treating mental health. And it was also a lot cheaper. Like, the, the price is crazy. But, you know, also, if look, this was a, a $5,000 course. To, the videos you sent me, I mean, the, I am not in as good a shape as the people that were in those videos. So I don't know. You take a typical 50 year old person mm -hmm. who's like, you know, out of shape. And not, I don't know how they just look, it looked military to me. So it looked like there's no way I could fit in that anyway. No. But and I know that in the course, even, yeah, another thing that was wild to me in the fact sheet of their website, they say you don't have to be an athlete to take the yeah. course. I'm like, yeah, you do. Yes, like, are you kidding look like me? It. Like, yeah, they they said you don't have to be an athlete, but you have to be experienced in doing like, you know, tractor pulls or like tire shoving and just like bear crawls and like mm -hmm. then an athlete, mm -hmm. like like yeah, I mean it's just crazy. And they have these people doing this stuff at three a.m., four a.m. I mean, I would yeah, love to I see know. follow up it's, studies, it's wild. Just stories like you said from people a year, two years later, not right after, but like down the road. Yeah. And that's something I've been trying to look for with this course. And so far I've seen people speaking positively of it in terms of feel like they have a sense of community and which that's fine, but there is no way that this is treating your mental health. There's no way. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's my main issue with it is like I, I think you even saw in the, one of the videos I showed you, he's the he said 
that this course is actually designed for mental health, even though it's dressed up with, you know, physical exercise and brotherhood, sense of community. Basically, his, it's his way of saying these are all buzzwords to try and get men to come in and talk about their mental health and hopefully we can treat them and cure them. I'm like, that's wild. And to not have one single licensed counselor or mental health professional to oversee this is even more wild. And um, a follow so, like, even what's the post? Like, do they have treatment available for them or resources available when they leave and reintegrate to help follow up with? You just dumped on the thing we do in mental health field, right? Is you don't want somebody to just dump everything out and then walk out like with no plan or no support. No. And I do want to mention in the course, they, they mention there's like once a month Zoom calls, but it's like group Zoom calls. And it's from what I understand and what they've said on it, it's, it's basically education on finance and business and taking your brand to the next level, like stuff like that. It's like, it's, it's just too many things that are all encompassing to me. And, you know, on top of that, there, there's too many things you're trying to offer at once. Number two, you, these Zoom calls should probably be more, be more about mental health more than anything other yeah. than, rather than, you know, talking about finances. I, I just feel like they, they lead with this healing trauma, but mm. it, they pass through it so quickly and they make the, their students believe this is a quick fix. Yeah. And I think that's just wrong. It's just wrong. I know we did kind of touch on this briefly a minute ago, but how do you think, in your opinion, somebody who takes this course and a year down the line, how do you think that they react to their family, to their friends? to their sons and daughters? Like, how do you think they bring that into their household? Like, do they bring that aggression with them? Do, do they just, or would they have a breakdown of sorts? Or would it be either or? Would it be both? Like, what, what do you think, in your opinion, would be the long-term results? Yeah, this is the challenge, right? That a lot depends on who they are before they enter the program, honestly, like what their personality makeup is. Yeah. Some people, even though they're big, strong, tough, and have been in the military, are sweet, kind, good-hearted people who do have that nature. So part of it depends on who they were before they came in. The post is they're going to do mm. probably one of two things. I'm This is a guess from me, but they're going to either come home and want to run home the way they did that training. And so they're going to want to be leaders that can help. I can help you be a better wife. I can help you be a better child or more successful or more achievement oriented. And so good family, good marriage equals order and direction. So they might carry that stuff home or they might also become a little more lost because without that group, in other words, I'm good when I'm with that group. I can share when I'm with that group. But when I go back into my bubble of daily life, they're not vulnerable they're not transparent, they're not honest, they're not open about how they really mm -hmm. feel. And so they keep it for the group and the, the, the people they have, that, which justifies them being okay. Look, I'm doing, I have a lot of people have said, I'm doing my mental health. Like I've got this group over here. I got this group of guys I meet with or whatever, but they don't actually mm -hmm. apply that to their daily life. And what I wanna do is interview your wife. I wanna interview your children. I wanna see what they think about, because my wife always says, Dustin, and we've been married 24 years. Mm. She says, I watch your feet, not your mouth, Tom. I want to see how you live. I want to see how you act. Yeah. I want to see how you walk through daily life, not just what you say that comes out of your mouth. And that's what the problem is in these trainings. The downside can be you are ordered around constantly to perform. And if you succeed at that, then you're a good person and you've made it and you've worked on your trauma. Mm. The question is, you're I don't know why that just did that on my screen. You're, it happened as you said, you've made it. Congrats. Fireworks. That was great. You want your spouse. That's making the video. That's right. You, you want yeah. your spouse and your children to feel loved, cared for, supported, encouraged, uplifted, and not that they're not good mm -hmm. enough. Exactly. And I think even the course owner 
said in the video, one of the videos I sent you, he said, men don't want to talk about this stuff, mm -hmm. which basically exactly. he's saying, eh, screw it. Like we're, right. we're not going to, we're just going to allow them a space to briefly talk about it here or exactly. have some and of course, course buddies. You're exempt from doing that. Yeah. It's like kind of alluding to, well, we're not going to focus on that because it ain't going to work anyway. So I don't know. I, I just, like you, I worry about the long-term effects of something like this. Yeah. And I would be curious to learn more about like, they, of course, they have testimonials on their website of, but they're all positive of people being like, this changed my life, like, which you can't really trust. Okay. So one of the last things I wanted to get to is the journaling portion of yes, this course thank you. I thought was very interesting because what the journaling, what they dress it up as is actually a real thing. From what I understand, it's called cognitive journaling. I've done it in my own therapy. You know, my therapist and I, we call it integrative journaling, mm -hmm. which is slightly different from what they're doing. But in general, from what I understand, it's called cognitive journaling. However, they call it something different. They call mm -hmm. it toxic cognitions. And what are your thoughts on this phrasing? Because I have my opinion and I feel like we have the same opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a negative connotation, mm -hmm. right? To trying to get you to open up and share, which you've got something dirty inside you. You've got something dark. You've got something negative, something, something that's bad. And so, that's very different than, like you said, integrative journaling, or like we would say in EMDR, you know, we have negative core beliefs that are formed in our brain from past experiences. And yeah, the word toxic kind of spins things. Yeah. It's, you know, immediately putting a negative connotation to your response to something that happened in your life that was horrible. Mm -hmm. And I, what I've learned in therapy is your response to the most painful experiences in your life is not toxic. It's not, you're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. You're just hurting and you're, you're in survival mode. That's what my therapist says. He's like, you're in survival mode. And believe it or not, your brain has done a great job of keeping you surviving. In fact, what your responses to these traumas are, it's doing a good job of keeping you surviving. And it has a positive intention in doing so we just need to teach it a new job and realign it and yeah and also going um, from survival mode with the brain to a thriving mode you know a lot of people have been through trauma or stress or any kind of rough background in life are learned to survive that's one of the benefits of coming out of trauma is some people really learn to be survivors and they learn to make it through situations but the key to life is learning how to thrive and not just survive the next trauma that's coming, but to start seeing when potential things. It's kind of like this course, right? I would look at it and say, you know what? I'm not really sure I want to put myself through that because I don't think I want to be approached that way by people because that's just going to absolutely, I mean, I'm going to feel less and less positive about myself. I'm going to feel beat up. And that might work for a coach on a basketball team who's trying to get his athletes to perform, whatever. But I don't want to go through that. And so mm -hmm. I would see myself just walking away from it where some people who never recover, Dustin, from the traumas, walk back into it. Mm -hmm. It's why some people pick relationships that can be really bad for them over and over, even with different people, because they feel like that's what they're worth. And we cannot let ourselves keep getting exposed to situations that are going to bring you down. And I wish this, this system mm -hmm. would say that. Like, this isn't for everybody, and mm -hmm. that's just for the tough people, that you have to understand where right. you're at emotionally in life and whether this is actually beneficial. Yeah. I want to yeah, know about- They need some journal. disclaimers. Like, what do they do? Yeah. From what I have seen online, it's kind of brief, but they, they essentially, they journal, they write out what their pain is and what their responses is, what their responses are. And um, they go through a mental process of labeling and determining why their responses 
are unhealthy and toxic and are holding them back from being the best version of themselves. Basically, it's just dressed up, kind of really tear down their responses. And it's almost, an, it's kind of invalidating, in my opinion, to label it like that and also approach it in that way because our minds, when going through stuff like that, as we've mentioned, it's, it's, it has an appropriate response at the time. And it's just stuck in survival mode. And at that, at one point, how our brains responded to that trauma was necessary to some degree and it was valid and it made make sense. And the way that they approach, you know, labeling the response, it makes it feel like they're being shamed. And I just know that's one of the reasons why I want to reach out to you in the interview is because I started learning about this part of the course and I was like, there is no way a therapist would ever read this and look at this and think this is normal. This is not a normal way to approach the journaling part of, you know, a therapeutic exercise. It's, it's just wouldn't happen. Recognize um, that Dustin, that you will never heal trauma cognitively. You will heal trauma emotionally. Mm -hmm. So when trauma hits, right. you know, we're born, the brain is developed right from the brain stem on up to the cortex. So over time, it, it grows from the bottom up and our traumas mm -hmm. early in life. That's why we're so kind of uh, primitive when we're younger, very concrete and very basic fight or flight that when a trauma hits, it starts from the base and goes all the way up. That's why when people have PTSD, a lot of times, sometimes it can take hours or days for them to settle their nervous system back down because the trauma was so big. Sometimes I can hear a car backfire outside and I can be fine because I know like really quickly that was a car, not a gunshot or anything, but somebody who went to war in the Middle East might sit here on edge for the rest of the day wondering, well, I, I know my brain's telling me that was a car, but I'm not totally. And that's what trauma mm -hmm. does. You won't heal it cognitively by saying you shouldn't think that about it yourself. You need to think more positively. You, you got to wash that stuff away and just forget about it. You need to experience the emotion of what you went through with a corrective emotional response to see what you deserve and what you can do next time to deal with it. Because the traumas are going to happen. And Dustin, when they leave this place, they're going to have relationships, bills, children, life situations happen that are going to be real challenging. And you know what? Trauma gets triggered by science, sights, sounds, situations, voices of people, all kinds of things will re-trigger it. And yeah, I, I think, and somebody who takes this course too, they're going to go back into the real world and they're not going to talk with their spouse. They're not going to talk with their friends really about any of this. And they're also going to very quickly lose sight of trying to heal themselves because they're going to use, well, I got kids, I got, I'm trying to build this brand. I'm working on this with the, in the zoom calls. I'm trying to, I'm building right now. I'm in the gym. Like they're going to think of every excuse humanly possible to avoid continuing journaling or looking more into it or going to an actual therapist or continuing because not only will they have, I got my course buddies, I got these zoom calls once a month. Uh, but I also got this other responsibility, like they're, you know, somebody who takes this course, like they're going to make a perfect, in their mind, a perfect reason for not continuing with any of this. And also they're going to have a negative outlook on their responses to their trauma, as you said, because they're, they were taught that it's wrong and it's almost shameful in a way. And like you, like you said, like it's, it, it's not approached in the right way. And that but, all has um, its place. Like the journaling has its place. The group stuff afterwards has its place. Those are all good elements. If they're done the way they need to be, that's perfect. They're just not the right. for what mental health is like. Exactly. Mental, all you got to do is go to a therapist yeah. afterwards and let them talk to you for a few weeks and see <laughs> if things really are healed. Right. And somebody mentioned this online. It's been talked about multiple times but of this course being a cult i don't know if that's true i don't know i i haven't put too much thought into that part of it yet i've been thinking on it more and more like it has potential maybe 
but I do know what happens in cults is they take certain elements that are like actual things that are true, that are, that makes sense. Brotherhood, a sense of community, healing, discipline, things like that. They take things that are actually true yeah. and like, okay, that makes sense. But the way they're approaching it mm -hmm. is skewed. And I think, again, I don't know or not if this is technically labeled as a cult or classified as that. I do know, though, that they're doing something similar in that regard, where they're taking things that are sensical and using it improperly. If you yeah, have but on staff there, they're going to be out there stopping some of this. They're going to be saying, that's enough with this person. Let me take them aside and let me talk to them. That would be the ideal, right? Is to have somebody there when somebody's really breaking down or having a hard time and saying, let's pause. Where's the group therapy uh, as a part of this? But 75 hours, Dustin, oh my gosh, <laughs> do they sleep? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they say in the course on the, on the fact sheet, they say sleep is minimal. Like they purposely keep sleep at a minimum, which also doesn't, that bodes horribly for the integrative or the, uh, what they call toxic cognitions journaling part of it because you're exhausted you have nothing left in the tank and then they're like let's talk about the worst moments of your life for hours and i don't know if they do the course for four and a half hours non-stop for the, the toxic cognitions part of the course four and a half hours non-stop i just know that they say that it it's a total of four and a half hours mm -hmm. but even if it is broken up i guess into two hours like two hours of journaling is it's not that's great that's a lot especially for the first time like I, me my personal experience when i started doing integrative journaling with my therapist like he immediately was like now if you start feeling like this is too much like within the first few minutes like do not push it stop right. like yeah, yeah like you're you're talking about things in a new way for the first time and it needs to be met with some pause that's the opposite of what they're doing they're going all out for hours and then on top of that talking about it with other unqualified people it's so much on top of what they're already doing physically it's just an emotional and physical gauntlet that is just very unhealthy but I, that is all the questions that I had. I think this was really interesting. I, and seriously, thank you so much for joining. I think this is going to be a really interesting part of the video. And I am going to upload this separately on the channel because I want people to see this in full. And, and because I think it's, it's important. Like mental health is important. It's important to me. And I think you have a lot of really valuable insight just oh, on I want to know how you should go about your mental health. I want people to hear that there's a lot of stuff that flashes before us that is, it looks great. It sounds great. It's packaged great. It's marketed great. It's edited great. It's, it's all put in there. And we, we too quickly fall into the quick fix mentality of, you know, something that can right. just change my life right now. And th that should all be a warning sign to us. Have somebody in your life that cares yeah. about you that you could ask about this and see if they think it would be good. My wife would never say this would be good for me. No. Oh, no, no. Like most people in your life would say absolutely not. This is $20,000 for 75 hours of extreme PE and like what? Like extreme PE and journaling? Like it's crazy. PE with the bully, Dustin. Um, it's, Bunch of bullies. Yeah. Not just PE. Yeah. It's ball. like, it's... yeah, I, it's, you know, I don't, it's, it's wild. Um, but you are right though. It is packaged nicely enough. And there are bits of truth in there where somebody really broken and really desperate and also really hell bent on not talking about this with yeah. therapists or really going through a long, grueling mental and emotional process of healing they would jump at this so yeah I, I just think it's fascinating and it but it also at the same time it 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 raises important topics that 
should be discussed. So really quickly before oh. you go, I, I think your YouTube channel is really interesting. I, I have not personally seen something like this on YouTube, at least in this way. I've seen therapists react to things like that, but you react to kind of like, I, I guess, top 40 music in many sense, in, in many ways, not just top, top 40 but like metal, I found you through you reacting to Slipknot, but you react to music and dive into the lyrics and talk about what they're saying from a mental health perspective and also from a psychotherapist perspective, which I think is awesome because so many people, when they listen to music and me oftentimes, because I've, you know, I've been in band, I sing in bands, I've, I've been singing in bands for years and I've just listened to music just all day, every day. And it's getting to the point where sometimes I don't pay attention either mm. to what's being said. And I know so many people are like that. I know so many of my friends who are like, I don't even know what they said. Yeah. And I think not only do you do an important service of reminding people of what they're saying, but also going through it and also sharing sharing it from a perspective of mental health. And I think that's just awesome. So I, I, I kind of want you want you to briefly plug your YouTube channel because I think it's awesome. I really appreciate that because at Reaction Therapy, which happened by accident, honestly, two years ago was my son's idea to, hey, let's do this over Christmas break. We did a reaction video. All of a sudden it took off. And the whole purpose being, I never hear these songs. It's the first time I hear everything. And I'm, I'm always looking at lyrics. I'm not a music. I don't know music. I can't critique the different sounds and instruments mm -hmm. and things, but I, or the voices even. But I can look at the lyrics and try to see where there's hope or where there's possibility or where there's despair and hopelessness. And so I just started doing that. <clears throat> and one of the things that came out of it that was pretty cool was a community of people who all loved talking about mental health and all loved talking about what their genre, their music, their favorite artist would say in their music. And so we listened to so many different types that at Reaction Therapy, we try to build a community around mental health, around support, around encouragement, whether we like a song or not, we kind of listen to all of it to see what messages are there. And for me as a therapist, honestly, I work one-on-one -on -one with people in my office every day. I now have a chance to talk to people all over the world. And that is the number one thing they say, Dustin, is you are able to see what's going on in the song without knowing anything about the artist or without knowing what the song is even about, just because I'm trying to hear what the message is inside of it. And that's my whole, that is the biggest blessing in the world because I've always wondered, how could I do this on a broader scale where people could learn that mental health is possible, that healing is possible, and that living a better life is possible? And lo and behold, this happened. And very quickly, you know, within 100 days, we had 100,000 subscribers in 100 days. And then now we're over 300,000 subscribers. The first 100 days? In the first 100 days, man. I mean, Wow. It was, it was that's wild. crazy for YouTube. Especially. I just had like, never that's seen. I think it's because it really wasn't out there, but we love doing it. It's yeah. so much fun.